Um, they control uh, our media, either through direct ownership or advertising. They control most of our uh, politicians because they finance their campaigns, either through their corporations or through personal contributions that come out of the corporations. And uh, they're not elected. They don't serve a limited term. They don't report to anybody. Uh, they really very, very much are running things. And they work under the premise that they should maximize profits regardless of the environmental and social costs. Would you mention that governments and corporations ah. and how the, the private enterprise is essentially... Right. And actually, in, in, in coupled with that, could you mention how the government essentially is invisible when it comes to the actions of the of the corporatocracy? Right. It's, it's, they put the front group of the uh, unregulated private corporations. Yeah, at the very... At the, so maybe they can one small adjustment. Okay, go at the very top of the corporatocracy, you really can't tell whether a person's working for a private corporation or the government because they're always moving back and forth. So, you know, you've got a guy who one moment is the president of, uh, of a big construction company like Halliburton, and, and the next moment he's, he's vice president of the United States, or the president who is in the oil business. And, and this is true whether you've got Democrats or Republicans in the office. You have the moving back and forth through the revolving door. So, you you know, you really can't distinguish. And in a way, um, our government is, is invisible a lot of the time, and its policies are carried out by our corporations on one level or another. And then again, the policies of the government are basically forged by the corporatocracy and then presented to the government, they become government policy. So it's an incredibly cozy relationship and a very dangerous relationship. I think that's that's part of what, as we move forward and we move out of this empire and we look for solutions. How do we create a better world for our children and grandchildren? One of the most important things is to break that, that, that bond there and to make people responsible more to just creating a decent world, creating a, an environmentally sustainable, socially just and peaceful world. It's interesting because the big corporations depend so much on the banking system, the whole financial system, the whole Wall Street system, and, 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 and the banks. On the other hand, the banks depend on the corporations to make their money. So with the money that they have, they're going to invest it someplace. So they're going to invest it primarily in corporations. Um, and so there's this, there's this symbiotic relationship between them that, that, that exists. You, you couldn't have the huge corporate structures that we have without the banking structure that we have, and you couldn't have the banking structure that we have without the corporate structure that we have. And once again, it's, it's that corporatocracy, and you've got the people moving back and forth between these things, working with each other. So the big corporations almost always have financial people on their boards, and the big financial institutions almost always have corporate people on their boards. And there's this interweaving and intermeshing at the very, very top. And then all of them, at one point or another, probably work for the government or with the government. And the government people come into the banking system or the corporate system when they retire from government. And then maybe they go back again at some point in time. So it's a very insidious, and, and I'd have to say, a corrupt system. A system that just feeds into the hands of what we call the corporatocracy and to a large degree works against everybody else in the world. Um, well, we economic hitmen really have been the ones responsible for creating this first truly global empire and we work many different ways. Um, but perhaps the most common is that we will identify a, a country that has resources our corporations covet, like oil, and then uh, arrange a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sister organizations. But the money never actually goes to the country. Instead, it goes to our big corporations to build infrastructure projects in that country, power plants, industrial parks, ports, things that benefit a few rich people in that country, in addition to our corporations but really don't help the majority of the people at all who are too poor to use much electricity or the ports or don't have the skills to get jobs in industrial parks. However, those people, the whole country is left holding a huge debt. It's such a big debt they can't repay it, and that's part of the plan, that they can't repay it. And so at some point, we economic hitmen go back to them and say, listen, you lost a lot of money, can't pay your debt, so sell your oil real cheap to our oil companies. Uh, allow us to build a military base in your country or 
uh, send troops in support of ours to someplace in the world like Iraq or vote with us on the next UN vote. And in that way, we've really created an empire, but we've done it very, very subtly. It's clandestine. So all the empires of the past were built on the military, and everybody knew they were building them. So the, the British knew they were building them, the French, the Germans, the, the Romans, the, the Greeks. And they were proud of it. And they always had some excuse like spreading civilization, spreading some religion, something like that. But they, they knew they were doing it. We don't. The majority of the people in the United States have no idea that we're living off the benefits of a clandestine empire. That today there's as much slavery in the world, more slavery in the world than ever before. That our shirts, our shoes, everything we own is made under the guise of this empire and that there's a tremendous amount of people around the planet suffering as a result of this. We are less than 5% of the world's population living in the United States. We're consuming more than 25% of the world's resources. That's a tragedy.